Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Vocal Defrag. Vocal Defragging is breaking it down. It's being truthful with yourself. It's being honest with your shadows. We all have shadows. We all have mindsets. We have ideas that come to us. We have goals that leave us. Do we talk about the transitions that we go through? The mindsets where things, you know, feel like you've been poisoned, and yet your next step couldn't have happened without stepping away. Locating that time. Those are shadows. So when I defrag, the goal is to ask the questions and then question the answers. I'm not hard on myself. I just want to know who I am, why I am, where I am. And then I place myself in the public eye. I get to go out and be with the community. I get to do things because if, if I'm lacking trust and faith in my own heart against myself, how can I have trust and faith in the community? You see what I mean? Ask the questions, question the answers. I happen to call it vocal defragging. I do it in two different places. One on paper because I do go back and study it. I study the handwriting. And with vocal defragging, it's an opportunity to reach those that aren't anywhere near my journals. When I talk to these people of fame about their defragging, they go, I've never heard of this before. Why have I never heard of this before? Well, I had to figure out a way to kind of showcase what defragging is and how important it is to ask the questions and then question the answers. I'm not talking about asking another person questions. I'm talking about you asking you questions and then question that answer. This is Vocal Defrag. Kind of a tough subject this week. And the reason why is because it deals with that little voice inside your head and heart that says, I quit. That's right, I quit. I can't do it anymore. I don't like the people I'm with. I don't like the way that it puts me in a mindset that kind of feels like it's poisoning me. I just quit. Well, on paper this morning, I openly admitted, we're all quitters. Oh, don't even try to deny it. We're all quitters, and we do it every week. We quit this, we quit that. And mostly we quit because we don't have the time to do something, so we quit. I I have publicly admitted that one of my biggest quits was putting paint on a canvas. It was always a dream to have my artwork in galleries. It made it. It made it. It was selling. And then one day, I had a bad show. It injured me so spiritually that I said, I quit. And I did. And I haven't gone back. I still, every now and then, have a desire to kind of, you know, sketch out a few things on a piece of paper. You know, doodle a little bit. But it's not the full-fledged artist that I was. Because I really thought that my calling was to put paint on a canvas. And I do go back and look at the pictures of the paintings that I no longer own. I sold them. That was the dream. To relinquish. To be the artist. Let it move through you. But I quit it. People have often accused me of quitting terrestrial radio. I'm a podcaster. Oh, yeah, but podcasters will tell you that broadcasting is not podcasting. It's a different league of its own. And I did some research on that. And it's all based on broadcasting is about the now. Podcasting is about, okay, I can go and listen to it a year from now, two years from now. With broadcasting, once it's been out on that tower, you ain't getting it back. So you have to ask yourself sometimes, where are you in life? And did quitting something open up a door for you? Now, there are things that I wish that I would not have quit, such as the painting on a canvas. Here's my question for you, and I would love to hear your answer. How do you unquit something that you've quit? Because you know that you quit once. You're going to quit easily a second time, a third time. How do you unquit what you quit? Identify what you've quit. Put your thumb on it. Say, yep, yep, I pretty much, I quit that. And what happens is, is that because you know the identity of both sides of the fence, meaning you know what it's like to score victory with what you really truly love in life, but you quit because something didn't go right, You know that what's going to happen is that as that quitter, you're going to know that, hey, I don't have to fear quitting because I know what happened the last time I was here. Unquitting a quit. I quit mowing my lawn 
in the early part of the 2000s. And the reason why is because I believe that my forest, that we planted 1,700 trees in it, didn't need to look like something that belonged on the cover of a magazine. I wanted this forest around this lake, around this beautiful creek, with all the deer, the owls, the hawks, the squirrels, the snakes. It had to be 100% natural. So I quit mowing my lawn and let nature do what nature does. And that in itself has allowed the animals and every living, breathing piece of grass to have a life. It grows in ways that inspires the heart to be somewhere other than on that magazine cover. I'm glad that I'm not mowing my lawn, but here's the thing. In the process of allowing nature to have its purpose back, the beauty of this forest puts joy in so many people's hearts because they see this forest, they walk through this forest, they live in this forest. More importantly, they're creative in this forest. So I won't unquit the lawn mowing. But will I unquit the painting on a canvas? I mentioned that I do have my days of scribbling around, but it's the fear of chasing that dream again. And I think so many times the reason why people do quit is because of the fear, the shame from others, the doubt of others, the guilt trips that we put ourselves through. We think we're mentally strong enough in order to make our way through these storms when one day the storms are too much. It's too heavy. You become weak in the soul in the way of saying, I can't give myself to this anymore. So I ask, what have you quit recently? What did you quit 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Do you think you have the ability to unquit it now that you know both sides of the playing field? When I was in radio, I always feared losing my job because I had never been on the other side. I had never been unemployed from radio. So for 26 years, I feared losing my job. So I gave my everything to the industry. That meant putting in anywhere between 14 to 19 hours a day. When it finally happened after 26 years of radio, I stood there in my house, in my studio that I built, and I said, I feared it. Why? What happened here? I have this new sense of freedom. So, so let's take it this way now, okay? We're, we're talking about things that we have quit and what can we unquit. What, what is something you should quit so that you can find the time? Because so many things are placed in our lives because we want to do this, we want to do that. We have to do this. Well, man, I'm going to keep up with the Joneses, so we better be doing this. Oh my God, I can't believe that I missed that because I was doing this. What's something in your life that you should quit? in order to get things done. If you hear something in your heart and you find that I can't do it, I don't have the time, or you face that wall that says, I, I, I'm just too old to do this now. No, you're never too old, never. Don't be the quitter, unless the quitting is going to benefit you, the person, the person that has the ability to reach out and help other people. What are you doing in life that maybe you should Quit. Set aside. Allow things to grow in its space so that you can have a place of new birth, replenishing. I face that question every day. That's the reason why I defrag. I ask the questions and I question the answers because that's how I live my podcast life. I've only allowed myself so much time to get the interviews done, to get the editing done, to get the promotions done. I've only got a certain window. I created that so that I can do other things. And in the process of getting control of what is stealing time, I've become a happier person. But I wasn't happy while I was sitting there podcasting from 7 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. That's all I was doing, was standing there in a studio thinking that I was reaching the world. But when we got it under control, I wasn't burned out anymore. Let me ask you that question. What should you be quitting that's burning you out? But you don't want to stop because you don't want to be a used to be. You don't want to be a quitter. Ask the questions, question the answers. I'm Arrow, and that's Vocal Defrag.